Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining this SYNC webinar brought to you in partnership with Checkpoint Software Technologies. My name is Jason Sedemel. I am the Chief Product Officer here at SYNC, and I am absolutely delighted to be joined by a fantastic panel of IT leaders to discuss the chaotic and often rushed move to the cloud. It's a very timely discussion, very timely discussion indeed, given that just a few weeks ago, in partnership with Checkpoint Technologies, we actually uh, conducted research and produced a report, which was released, um, all around understanding and addressing cloud concerns, um, of which I will provide a link actually in the chat feature here, guys, just so you can go and download and access your free copy in your own time. But the report was very, very interesting, a very timely topic. Um, our analysis of the research shows that CIOs and IT security executives and other IT leaders around the globe um, obviously experiencing this, this crisis, but it has helped boost business use of cloud-based IT. And research and analysis will show that it will continue to do so through at least the next 24 months. It also tells us that very few firms are adequately prepared to secure the extended use of cloud-based IT, and that leaders are very concerned about cloud as a result. Having to build your cloud environment in a hurry further heightens those concerns, which we will obviously discuss today. So as mentioned, I do have a fantastic panel for you, um, which I will now take the time to introduce. So first and foremost, we have Mr. Kirk Sergentson, the CIO for Arbor Memorial. Hello there, Kirk. Good afternoon. Afternoon to you. Everyone. Jennifer Pearson, the Senior Manager for Enterprise and Business Systems at MDA. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, and good morning for those on the West Coast. Good morning to you on the West Coast there. Mr. Dominic Chung, Director of IT at Chaitons LLP. Hi there, Dom. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you all virtually. Yes, indeed. Hello, hello. And last but certainly by no means least, Mr. Grant Asplund, the Chief Cybersecurity Evangelist at Checkpoint Software Technologies. Hi, Grant. Hi, Jason. Thanks. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be here with you. Very much so. Looking forward to a fantastic session, as I said. So, guys, um, as always, attendees, please utilize the Q&A feature to submit your questions to the panelists, and we will obviously address them as accordingly. Um, but without further ado, I really want to jump straight into this conversation. And Grant, I'm going to throw the first question to you as our partner on this particular webinar. Now, we're here to discuss building your cloud strategy in a hurry. Part of that hurry is determining which cloud provider is or which cloud environment is the best route and decision for you. So candidly, let me ask you, in your opinion, is one cloud provider better than the other? And if so, which one is best? Well, first again, I want to thank you, Jason, and uh, the esteemed panelists that I'm able to sit with. It's really going to be fun. And, and so I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Some of you may know this already. Uh, this whole pandemic has forced us to accelerate our transformation uh, it's, there's no question, it, it, it's really uh, been a game changer. And, you know, in a word, I'm going to say no. But what I will say is the one that's the best is the one that you know, understand, and use. <laughs> because really, uh, what we all need to understand is the cloud offers unprecedented capability. And in fact, I've got a, you know, we, we like, I'm sure many of you uh, pay the Gartner tax. I've got the, uh, a Gartner report from uh, Q4 last year. And it literally says how to make cloud more secure than your own data center. Okay, so this folly of, oh my gosh, uh, it's not as secure as I can do, eh, wrong answer. Um, and so I think, there are different challenges. Um, my suggestion, it's sort of like, you know, pick one vehicle, because if you pick any of the main leading vehicles, you're going to be you're going to be pretty safe. And I would say, you know, in that mixed metaphor, that vehicle is 
uh, one of your main cloud providers that you feel best, most comfortable with. Uh, and my, my caution, and I'd love to hear the panelists' comments, is don't think that you're gonna be just riding that horse and no other horse as you go on your journey because it's very likely you're gonna be adding to it. That's where your complications are gonna come in. Excellent, thank you very much. Raising a good point there of obviously multi-cloud strategies being an important component of this. You know, it's not necessarily in your best interest to put all of your uh, backing into one horse, so to speak. Um, Jennifer, I'm going to come to you with a question. Um, you were kind enough to actually deliver a presentation at our recent Canada Virtual Forum all around getting your head into the cloud. So talk to me a little bit about um, where the downfall has been thus far when it comes to general IT leaders and organizations approach to cloud, why there has been a little bit of pushback, um, which is now causing a lot of people to have to really hurry this process through. Yeah, I, I think that there's been a lot of unknowns and that's really slowed people down from developing their strategy. So the first thing that really any leader should be doing is educating themselves on what cloud really means because there's different models, whether it's software as a service or platform as a service or IAS. And you need to understand what each offers in terms of capabilities. Exactly as Grant said, you know, there, there is no one solution that's going to be best for you other than the one that best delivers your business objectives. So salespeople will always tell you that they've got the best tool for the job. It's on you to understand what it is that you're trying to deliver. And I do think security has been a very big piece. So as cybersecurity comes more and more to the forefront of the CIO's mind, the CISO and the CIO really need to become strong partners and advocate together for a strategy that's going to elevate the business as a whole. So I do think that there's more forums available now. There's also the Cloud Security Alliance that helps educate others to make sure that we can make good decisions for the business and have some governance in place and understand what's possible. Yeah, thank you very much. And interestingly enough, in the research we covered, 96% of our surveyed participants um, raised extreme concerns with cloud security as one of their hesitations behind this. Um, Dom, coming over to you, um, without going into too much detail, I know you're kind of on this journey yourself right now, yep. right? And we're trying to get there. And so talk to me a little bit about kind of like, I suppose where the delays came from in, in the original instance. Um, and then secondly, um, what does a hurry look like to you? I mean, is there a timeline for this? <laughs> um, I'd love to get your perspective on that. Yeah, um, not so much um, a hurry, but definitely um, the executives and, and, and members have expressed a lot of interest in moving to the cloud, just because from what they're hearing from other law firms is that it, 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 um, it facilitates working remotely and they just want to, you know, with this whole pandemic situation, they're, they're saying that, you know, we, we see this being something that lasts, uh, you know, at least a year still, right? And we need to be able to operate. We're working okay currently with our current platform, which is a, which is a mostly on-premise, right? But what we have done uh, in the last few years is slowly transition to cloud ready, if I can, if I can call it that, right? In the sense that, you know, we, we implemented hyper-converged solutions to uh, convert all our uh, physical servers into VMs. And now we're at, at the right stage where we're like, okay, so if we want to move these VMs out into the cloud, it's, it's literally a matter of just choosing which platform we want to choose. But our cautious approach has been, you know, let's look at our major applications and let's see if they have cloud solutions, like SaaS solutions out there for them. And lucky for us, uh, most of our uh, major applications do have SaaS and we're slowly being transitioned. I mean, Office 365 was one of the big ones we did a few years back. Uh, and then our document management system will be next. And then following that, our accounting system leaving very little left and we'll be able to decide whether we're going to keep those on-prem or move those to the cloud. But the, the big question is always, um, the problem that we have is always, um, what's the performance? You know, people that have worked on traditional infrastructure have always, you know, they, they're used to a certain type of speed. And, you know, when we switched to Office 365, it wasn't the same, right? So when they were handling large documents as all law firms do, there was a little bit of a wait for them to download to their computers before they could open it. Um, but, you know, 
Um, it's, it's been three years now and I'm not hearing anything. People just got used to it. And we have to be careful navigating that to make sure that you know, the experience of the user uh, trumps everything that we do. Um, and of course, security has to be there as well. Definitely. Uh, we'll be addressing that big elephant in the room um, in a bit more detail in a sec. But before I do that, just to kind of set a little bit of a tone again, Grant, I'm going to come to you on this particular question. So it's a bit of a double header. Um, number one, why outside of obviously, you know, <laughs> the obvious right now of, hey, people are working remotely, people need access to things, bits and pieces from all over the country, um, all over the world in some cases. Um, so that obviously kind of fast forwarded a lot of plans for a lot of individuals. But outside of that, why would organizations find themselves in a hurry to build a robust cloud environment? And then the second follow-up question to that would be, what are the typical mistakes you see people making in that early stage planning and strategy when they're trying to rush this process or when they have a need to rush this process, I should say? Well, so first, good question. I'll say the the first reason we're all in a hurry is because the business is in a hurry the cloud it, it moves at an unprecedented rate i mean so fast we can't even really fathom it and my one of my great cautions is to to look at I'm, i if you'll forgive me i'm going to tell a quick story but i think all of us are going to be able to appreciate this there was a phenomenon that took place about 2007, it was 2007, it was called Bring Your Own Disaster. Remember it? Now, the reason I call it that, and I'm sure you'll all recall the day, it, it changed the game. And what it was, was like this. I opened it, oh my God, wow! This is so cool! Oh, hey, mail. Yeah, I know my used the name. And my password, <laughs> next, next, okay, okay, done, wow, and that instant, every IT professional on the planet, their hair burst into flames, because nobody called them and said, hey, can I, now, my point to that story is there was the birth of something new that is ongoing today, and I'm going to ask you, Dom, Jennifer, Jason, remember RTFM. F is for fine for anybody that doesn't know, unless you ask me 10 times, then it changes, right? Now, why do we do that? We don't. We go and undo. And that's really my point. With the birth of this thing and this whole new ease of everything, it's undo, undo, undo. You know, AWS has more than 200 controls with no undo at all. My point is, it's the nuances, the subtleties, and we jump into this thinking, oh, hey, Dominique, ask one of your guys if he can use a load balancer. Oh, yeah, I used F5 load balancer for five years. Great. Then he can fix the ELB. How stupid is that? right? Because then he or she's going to go poke around and go, whoop, undo. <laughs> no manual, just, right? So, so my number one caution is plan. Know what you're doing. Don't, you know, it's the old carpenter, measure, 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 then cut, right? And, and the tendency, because it's pulling at us so fast, is we want to just go, oh, God, look how easy this is. Oh, new storage, boom. Yeah, oh, I can put it there. Okay, point it to that database, boom. Next thing you know, you've got things going and you don't even know what you got going. So plan, don't assume anything and, and read the documentation, understand the subtleties and the nuances and know that when you're managing an environment, it's all APIs, that's a game changer compared to sitting at a console all day with a card key to get to where you're at, because that you don't need either. Jennifer can log into mine from anywhere on the planet with the right username and password, right? So it's just, it's so different. It, it's, try, it's like you're a thoroughbred that wants to sprint. You got to pull those reins and really control that, that energy. 
Well, it's a great point. And, and Jen, you know, to that, you, you, I mean, you were the first person on this session to really kind of like, you know, bring that topic of security because, you know, it is really the, the biggest thing that people need to consider. Um, and especially, you know, somebody like yourself who's based out in British Columbia, and we all know the different rules and regulations that you must adhere to when it comes to protection of said, you know, information. And so um, when, when Grant talks about the reins, what are those fundamental kind of security building blocks that you really need to pay a lot of close attention to at the very beginning of this process rather than it being an afterthought? Yeah, the first thing I'd say is that cloud services are a shared responsibility model. So the CSP has already defined exactly what they're responsible for. And as the customer, you need to understand what it is that they're responsible for and where your responsibilities lie as well. It's old hat to them because they've established everything through their architecture and it, it really is unwritten or written into all of their policies. But if you are new to this space, you might not understand what that means. So I'll say that that is also a risk for a rush to selection. It means that you might not understand what you're taking on. And it doesn't matter whether it's a SaaS solution or a PaaS solution or something else. You really need to do your due diligence in this area. Um, you know, otherwise other risks in rushing is that you could oversubscribe to something. You could be purchasing much more than you're ever going to make use of. You could be locking yourself into a vendor for licensing or for a service provider. So really, first and foremost, I'd say that what you need to focus on is um, some governance and make sure that you know how you're going to be going around implementing your cloud strategy. And if you don't have a cloud strategy yet, you need to define one, even as you first dip your toe into the pool. Data classification, understanding which countries are going to be involved, whether for your own organization or where the data is going to be stored and moved and where your customers reside, um, processing, all of that data really does matter. So understanding how you're going to go through that procurement process as well, when you choose your CSP matters. So who's responsible? Are you going to have compliance folks looking at it? Legal, is there an HR implication to any localized site may have their own rules that they need to be sharing with you so that you understand what their regulations look like. And only then can you really say that you're informed in order to establish the governance and policies that are needed to ensure that you've got a solid architecture going forward. And then of course, these education pieces and making sure that you've got a solid deployment model and that your own staff has been trained and they understand how it is that they're going to be maintaining whatever this cloud is, because no matter what the model is you select, there is some level of maintenance in a shared responsibility model that they will be accountable for. Well said. Kirk, welcome back. Um, Grant just took energy levels up to 100. Um, so I'm going to throw you right in the deep end here and basically come to you with a very quick question. So we've swiftly moved on to the topic of security, understandably, right? As we were just addressing, it is really the number one concern for everyone. Um, so talk to me a little bit as a CIO, right? Um, how should CIOs work closely with the security leaders in their organization? And what should they look to from their security counterparts of their company if they don't own security themselves to make sure that this is at the forefront of the process, you know, from conception all the way through to execution? Yeah, right. So first of all, apologies for dropping off. A little bit of a power <laughs> issue hit me from the side. So. Um, we just hired a CISO a couple of weeks ago. So, um, you know, I think there's a couple of pieces of that. One is recognizing that security is pretty intense these days and that you need to be prepared. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, so you're used to security when you know, on-prem or, or colo, but the cloud becomes a whole different animal. So, um, yeah, for sure, become an absolute partner with my uh, CISO. I think... Um, uh, and, and Jen talked about being, you know, partnering and working together. I think the, the very first thing we did was share our strategic plan, the five-year plan from the IT side, right? Saying, look, this is where we're going. We've got a mobile app in production, you know, we're moving our ERP into the cloud, you know, really getting him familiar with all the different aspects of where we are and where we're going. And then overlaying that with, with his five-year plan. So we, we've spent um, several hours in a boardroom you know, just going through that meld of the two programs. And I think that's really important. So um, if I were to sort of consolidate down the steps is sort of bearing our soul from a technological perspective on where we're going and then engaging him with what his expertise will bring to that and, and how to engage him. So now as we go through software builds, like he's sitting at the table with us at the very beginning, any RFP, in fact, he's involved in that from the very beginning. So it's that coordination together um, that just moving through everything hand in hand. 
and then digressing where where I don't know, right? And and you know he's in a position for a reason, and so really ensuring that he's got a, a big voice that sometimes overpowers mine to ensure that we're safe. Because at the end of the day, you know if a breach happens, then you know I'm kind of holding the bag. So just making sure you've got the experts um, uh, giving their two cents where they need to. Excellent, thank you. Um, Grant, I'm gonna actually ask you uh, uh, as well another question, obviously based on the fact that you work with so many different clients and so many different walks of life um, across so many different cloud infrastructures themselves. The topic again has come up here, you know, yes, security, but also uh, governance, compliance, right? Um, so, I mean, how easy can compliance policies be customized within that cloud infrastructure? Well, you know, that's a, that's a, that's, that, that's a really, that's like, how long is a rope? Uh, it, it's a, it's a difficult question. I think um, I'll turn it around and say, as you move into the cloud, just right now in your mind, picture two places to go swimming. On the left, it's that above ground swimming pool in your backyard, right? That you, you make sure has the right chlorine pH and enough water. On the right is a waterfall that feeds into a hole of water, a swimming hole out in the woods. Both places to go swimming, but significantly different concerns, pH, enough water, any uh, uh, leaves, uh, whether or not something's gonna eat you and bite you and always changing as that waterfall implies, right? It's constantly churning. This is far and away the biggest gotcha as you move into the cloud, it's all, I mean, it's what we love about it. It's this elastic, almost like it's breathing and heaving and getting big and going small. And that's what's so awesome and, and, and great about it. But it also introduces new challenges. And what I will suggest to anyone, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, panelists, on this one. Deja vu all over again. Yogi Berra famously said it's only exacerbated. Let's go back to when virtualization came about when we all hated servers running at six, eight percent. And it's like, oh man. And all of a sudden, thank you, Stanford. Boom. I'm at 60, 70 percent. Woohoo. But then all of a sudden, I'm going, what the hell is vMotion? What's this inter VM communications? And I needed new tools to address these new capabilities that were introduced with this awesome new capability. We're there again, only it's exacerbated because now I, I've got things that we've always went to, hey, Kirk, what's the IP address? Let's hunt down that problem. Well, in the world of functions or Lambda, <laughs> does an IP address matter when it's around for a split second? The game is changing and we have to remember because it's always churning, we need new tools, not, we can't abandon anything we've done, but we need new tools to ensure we can continuously enforce a compliance rule because we have this high propensity of drift because we can scale up to 16 servers and then down to one but the policy still has to be implied equally all the time. So that's where you really need to investigate new tools that are able to give you that crystal clear visibility and then the capability to customize rules comes into play. Because any rule can be customized as long as you got a staff to write the rules. That's a question to you. Jennifer, how many developers do you have available to bang out custom compliance rules? That's now we're starting to get into the rub as you start to use the tools more and more. Holy crap, I can't, uh, that's, I need something simple. I need something accessible. So, so my encouragement is to look for tools that make it easy for you to do these things you're gonna have to do in this new, environment makes sense definitely don't i mean dom does this resonate with some of the stuff the in the conversations that you guys are having as you are kind of on this journey right now um sure like a nightmare <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah uh, so you know like I, I mean i can bring to 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 light some of the challenges i'm facing right now um you know we have users working on workstations um our current solution um 
they come in they, they, through VPN and the RDP straight to their desktop. So every you know security tools and compliance and governance that we had on their workstation still exists. But as we mo as we move to solutions that you know we were stepping away from that and going to more of like a a, a virtual desktop, right? We're like, okay, or, or maybe even an app-based type cloud app solution where they could be, you know, banging away on the iPad and use various apps. How do we how do we monitor them, right? How do we track our users and 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 track things like DLP and and uh, you know security in general, right? Um, without having like it could be their laptops, and we're not going to install agents on their laptops or iPads and things like that. How do we extend that that same you know level of comfort I have you know safeguarding our data um, to remote users um, through the clouds? So so we're like well maybe that that app type the cloud app type solution isn't for us. What we do need is to have some kind of container uh, that we deploy on the iPad and the users work within those security containers right with agents involved for us to track and monitor. And do everything that's required, you know, just not not just for internal policies, but also for our um, clients as well, who require us to have, um, you know, governance and compliance. And I think how how are they going to set those those policies in place when they're not even there yet, right? And yet we're trying to move away from that. So I think you know, in some ways, you know, our 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 responsibility to our clients is actually going to rein us back in. To say that you you can't do that right unless you do certain things so you know we can say we want to be there but at the end of the day we have to make sure all parties are happy with the solution grant you're nodding along there all, all, all kind of makes sense from an evangelist standpoint yeah no i mean i, I look at i totally understand I, I, everybody's environment's very unique and different Right. I mean, it's not a one size fits all. I think one of the things that's emerging and I'm curious, Kirk, if you've experienced this, because it sounds like you've been doing this a while. Um, it used to be we kind of thought of the cloud and as, oh, hey, Jennifer, you guys using the cloud? Yeah, we're using Salesforce. <laughs> right. And that was it because they were the SaaS of the world. Right. Um, and and my point is this has now kind of like silly putty stretched and st and now we've got this long really journey from just jumping in and using a SaaS to platform infrastructure as a service and all these variations and what inevitably happens is we jump in and we think yeah that's not that far to swim over there and it's almost like the shore goes farther away and farther away as they introduce new stuff that you want to keep swimming to. And, and it becomes a very long journey with a lot of different points in that journey. So I caution the point solution for this, right? You got to kind of step back and look holistically at what cloud really represents. It's a big word. I mean, Kirk, what, what's, I mean, is that accurate for what you've seen? It, nailed it. I mean, there's on a couple levels, I think one of the big things, even the paradigm shift going from, you know, a uh, capitalized asset in, within your four walls to the cloud, that's a big paradigm shift just for finance. So, you know, we were never able to go, oh, hey, let's just throw everything in the cloud and call it a day. Uh, there's always been a step approach, but even as you get through that sort of paradigm shift of how you're going to pay for everything, I think that forces CIOs to be a little more tactical and more strategic about what goes first, right? And then I think when you lay out your environment and you lay out all the applications, there are some quick wins you can absolutely use the cloud for that make things just so just much more sensible in, in the context of your broader strategy. So, you know, we're working on a mobile program right now. So that middleware that's going to sit between our mobile app and our back end, that's going in the cloud. That makes total sense cost-effective, uh, taking cloud and using it in a way that's very powerful. And then that starts to pull people in. So you're not swimming all the way out and you can't see the shore anymore, but you're on that nice little cozy dock in the sun, you know, kind of mm -hmm. relaxing because that application fits so nicely into that environment. So right. I agree with you hundred percent. I think anyone listening really think through the strategy of cloud 
don't just dive in, sort of, you know, uh, iterate where it makes sense, and then you can move into complexity. But I still maintain that there'll be some things that will remain on-prem or in colo forever, or, or even for the next, you know, few years. I think you just you need to think that through. Yeah, I totally. I, 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 uh, I had the dubious honor and pleasure to be on a panel uh, at in Tremblant, right? Not a bad place to have a, a panel at the Fairmont. Uh, it was an IDC event. There was a couple hundred CISOs there, but I loved how the IDC analyst started off because you know it was a cloud panel, and he said everyone is going to be moving to the cloud everyone. It's just going to take 40 or 50 years. And I just thought that's spot on. That's spot on. Uh, because it's, it will ultimately prevail in almost every instance. Uh, I think they'll even figure out some of the air gap issues and the things that we're struggling with. But um, I, I think the biggest caution is don't believe lift and shift. That's a lie. You know, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Uh, measure six times, cut once. And uh, there's lots and lots and lots of resources available, free or near free, whether it's, you know, the, uh, the computer security alliance or cloud security alliance, they have a bunch. SANS has a ton. Uh, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, all tons available. That's where I always point people to is just go look up CBT and, 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 and learn it um, before you think you're ready for production. <laughs> so you, you, make, you, you know, you make a great statement there. Um, and albeit, you know, you're, you're kind of, you know, um, taking what somebody else has said and, and sharing it with us, but everyone's going to get there, right? Um, Jen, the question I want to I want to ask to you is the technology is available. Technology is readily available. Of course, you know, the different technology will suit different organizations for their needs and wants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's there. Okay. The resources, the education, it's there. Where there seems to be a consistent stumbling block is around the culture of adoption within these organizations. So how important is it to really marry that culture with the technology to make sure you get to your end destination safely and securely. So to me, it's imperative. You really can't have one without the other. And that goes from ensuring that you have a security culture within your company to start with. And it's not just about cloud and cybersecurity. It's a security culture on a whole, um, as well as an understanding of what the benefits are with cloud technologies and what objectives you're trying to meet for the business. So it's that conversation and making sure that, you know, as IT, we've been talking for a long time about becoming evangelists and ensuring that we are providing service and partnership to the business. With that comes the education on what cloud can offer and where the benefits are, but also in doing a lot of education, even internally at a very basic level on where the risks are and where the additional investment may come in. So I'll say, you know, I agree with you. I, I love the, the visual of having a pool and a waterfall and having that contrast between the two. It's all about the parameters and how you're going to monitor and enforce what, it, what you need. So it's that shift. Yes, you've got scalability. Um, you've got elasticity, there's tons of benefits in cloud, maybe even cost savings, but you are going to have to do some different types of investments and take some different um, actions that maybe you hadn't thought of before. So it, it's a cultural journey that everyone needs to go on together. Thank you very much. Hey, I want to ask if I may, Jason. Um, it seems like Dom, we've got one gold post and Kirk the other in terms of where you guys are on running this field. And so I'd love to hear uh, from you, Dom, what have you been most, I, I guess, kind of surprised by or, um, you know, just uh, weren't expecting? And then Kirk, kind of the same question, uh, maybe in reverse. Uh, what was it that you were expecting was really going to be a bugger that really surprisingly wasn't? So Dom, what, what, what surprised you as like, holy moly, I didn't know this was going to happen or this was going to be the problem or this was going to be just what what surprised you most as you started this journey? Uh, the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, we were, I, I was kind of like pushing the execs towards this roadmap 
of moving a lot of the on-prem to the cloud just because we so have a very- did the pandemic, did the pandemic impact? I mean, I understand it was not expected, but what impact does that have? It, uh, the impact it had was just that it, it escalated uh, the executive's mindset on this on a cloud strategy, right? Um, and you know, before I knew, I didn't even have to ask them. They were just like, "Hey, you know, you talked, you know, a few years ago about you know moving our document management system to the cloud. Can we do it now?" <laughs> right? I was like, "Okay, <laughs> right." So this is this was the rush uh, to, and, and you know, we we were looking at solutions. We were in talks and. I, we're always going to go for an on-prem solution because you know the exec's mindset was always, and the biggest concern was always, who owns our data, right? Like, like what happens if the company goes belly up? Do we lose our data, right? That was, you know, that was their biggest concern, and you know, that's, I mean, that's that's been solved already. We own the data, and we have X amount of time to retrieve our data. But that was the biggest concern, and once that was addressed, they were like, okay, so let's switch to the cloud. It, it may cost a little bit more, but we like the idea of having our stuff in the cloud available yeah. at all time, regardless of what's happening at our primary office, right? So that, so they're very excited, you know, like the, the court systems have switched, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, we, you know, we, we had Forced to, acceleration, right? Forced I mean, acceleration was the biggest acceleration. change. Correct, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think, I think that that was the biggest game changer for us. And, you know, yeah. I welcome it. Some people may not, but, you know, I, I welcome it. Yeah. yeah. So Kirk, sorry, I'm not meaning to take your job, Jason. <laughs> Kirk, what, I'm, what's, how about, you know, on the other end? Right, I, you know, Je Jennifer sort of picked up on this and I just, um, the, the thing that blew my mind that I thought would be a struggle was the engagement from my team. So, you know, there is a, that change management aspect where you're, where you come in, you say, look, this is the direction we should take. And you get worried that people won't adopt it in a, in a very um, passionate way. But, uh, you know, my team was amazing the way that, uh, you know, they really got in. We had several meetings with AWS, with, with Microsoft, um, you know, learning about the technologies, really getting engaged. And then before you know it, you know, they're starting to innovate. So, you know, we're building a whole uh, enterprise data warehouse and, and people are talking about data lakes and, it's it's very exciting. So you know when you when you when you say cloud, you you feel like you're going to get this. Oh, I don't know. It's it's not secure, and there's all this hesitation. But you know the passion, I think, and the desire to explore these new technologies has been amazing for my team, and that really does two things: breeds a lot of confidence uh, within the whole organization, right, executive included. But also it gives um, technologists a new playground to learn and and to, to expand their, their skill set. So I've been really yeah. impressed with that. And I really think that attitude has, has uh, thoroughly helped us uh, expand our cloud presence. And I, cool. and I do think education is the biggest part of that. And you know, hats off to a lot of the vendors who, were, who did a great job educating us and you know, showing us the art of the possible. Huh. I, I'll tell you, I, one of the things I always advocate, and I, I point to uh, the picture on the screen of Jennifer, because if there's one thing also that I really advocate for anybody that's moving into the cloud or getting into the cloud is go to get expertise, get help, go to people that really know their stuff. Because I think we forget how much technologies in every aspect of our lives. And I'll tell you what, the pace of change in the cloud is so fast, you can't keep up. We, we think we can't, you can't keep up you cannot keep up. So unless, I mean, it's just the, I think the best money you'll spend is going out and finding a really great technical, insightful, strategic resource that understands the cloud and how to apply it to your business because that will pay itself in spades. You go try to do it yourself, I'm telling you. I mean, we all know the rule, right? What is it? We have to be right, how much? 100% of the time, the bad guys just once. So it makes sense to get the very best help you can. And in the, the, the pace of change in the cloud, again, I mean, I always point to there are lots of really good cloud experts, pay them, use them, leverage them. They'll, they'll let you run at the speed of cloud instead of you holding yourself up. Well said.
Well said. Well, that's bringing us towards the end of the session as well. It's a lovely uh, place to kind of end, but we do have a question from the audience that I do want to address, obviously in the interest of making sure that people walk away with as much information as they possibly can. Um, Pradeep Nev, hi Pradeep, thank you very much for your comments thus far. Um, he just asked, with COVID, uh, the BC government put in place some temporary relaxations to legislation which opened up opportunities for cloud usage in environments where otherwise this would not be feasible. With the temporary nature of this in mind, how do you look at crafting or updating a cloud strategy so as not to lose the momentum created by this temporary relaxation, but also anticipating the rehardening of that legislation? So I'm going to start, Jen, as a BC native, going to come to you, and then Grant, to close things out, I start with you, so I'd like to come to you last as well. So um, Jennifer first, please. Yeah, so, so first and foremost, I would say that if you are looking to take advantage of cloud solutions to get you through this bridge period where everybody's working from home and it isn't part of your long term strategy that puts you in the position where you're trying to make maybe a rush decision. So understanding exactly the purpose of the tool that you're selecting and what its longevity is going to be in your environment is key. So if you just need a temporary web application for collaboration, that's very different than saying, okay, I'm now moving my ERP to the cloud and maybe there's a risk there because there's data that has compliance requirements around it. So I would pick and choose very carefully as you develop your strategy short term to take advantage of this if normally it wouldn't have been part of your long term cloud roadmap. So that, that's why I'd say make sure you do your homework, do some research and understand what your exit plan is going to be. Because the other thing too is as IT professionals, we don't like to provide tools or solutions to people only to remove them. So you need to have a plan to be able to provide them with that same level of service once perhaps this hardening period comes back into place and we're no longer able to use the same tools anymore. Thank you. And Grant, as I said, just to close things out, we're already a little bit over time here, but I'd like to give you the floor just to close out with that final question. And then just again, reiterate the one piece of advice you'd give attendees here today. Um, who are currently having experience in this this speed challenge. Great. Well, thank you. And first, thank you, Jason and Jennifer, Dom, Kirk. It was great being with you and having a chance to, you know, be a little animated. I know that I am sometimes, but I got a lot of juice and I'm passionate about this stuff. So uh, <laughs> Never I, apologize I appreciate for that. it. Never um, apologize for that. Keep going. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of... Uh, moving a box only once. I just got through moving. We lived 20 years in a house and we moved. So, you know, that's what I'll say in terms of making any kind of changes and whether or not you're going to pull it back. Because if you make the change and it's effective and it works, you got to ask yourself why you're pulling it back. Is it, are you pulling it back because you're fixed on this old way of thinking? And let me just tell you a quick story about our own CEO, founder, Gil Schwed. I, I've known Gil because I was the first checkpoint at, uh, or the first checkpoint evangelist back in 1998 when they had 400 employees. And he just said at an all hands meeting, this has been a game changer for him because it's changed his perspective. His whole life have to be in the office, have to be in the office, have to be in the office. No remote access to our code. Well, guess what? Forced acceleration force transformation, he's now going, gosh, I can see three, four different CISOs or executives all around the planet in one day instead of having to travel. I mean, he's now realizing there's a number of benefits to this forced transformation. So I think we need to just look at the world a little differently, accept how things have evolved and are going to be and always remember that if we can do things, I, I, I just, I'm gonna go back to how I started. Don't move a box twice. Last comment, what I'm gonna really encourage everybody to do is get experts to help you look into the training and understand it. So RTFM and don't be afraid to consider new tools to wrestle and give you the visibility and wrestle down the new capabilities you want to exercise. Well said. Well, thank you very much. Just to reiterate um, Grant's words there. So thank you panelists for your insight today. Um, thank you attendees. Um, to everyone's point, the resources are available. We have a fantastic resource in the shape of a benchmark report. Um, it is complimentary. I've just shared the link again in the chat feature. 
go and download that. Some really interesting insights there to help you along your journey. Um, but thank you all for taking the time to participate and uh, watch this particular session today. We all know your time is very, very precious. So we really do appreciate that.